memories are good.
Good morning. Uh, we just have a few announcements that we'd like to share with you. I, I, I uh, wanted to tell you a few uh, really cool things before we get started. Um, we get to have a baptism this morning uh, with Lillian Cunningham. Uh, this has literally been a year in the making. Um, she, has, she started the question probably two years ago and said, uh, I want to get bath baptized. And I said, okay. And I said, well, let's sit down and talk. And then she and I talked, and then we asked more questions. And then it just kind of kept going and going and going. And so then, uh, was it last week, Bobby? She said, I want to get baptized next week. I said, okay, here we go. <laughs> so uh, I'm really excited about this. And um, we're going to have those. The, that's my very first thing. The second thing I want to talk about is uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for all of you coming to support Brother Bell's Barbecue. Um, yes, I have some leftover uh, I, I will be, uh, I, I, had met, I had planned on uh, selling the extra by the pound, but I'm not doing that today. There's something about money changers and the sanctuary selling stuff that, that it just, just makes me a little nervous. Uh, we've already had lightning hit the building a couple times. Let's not do, tempt anything else, you know. So, uh, so I, I, I do have some, and, and, and I'll, I'll uh, get to that point at some point. Um, the third thing is, is the, we have the football breakfast this week on the 24th at 7 a.m. If you signed up for a casserole, we're asking you to bring the casserole already warmed and heated up uh, at 7 a.m. to the kitchen. Um, and uh, we really appreciate that. And if you have signed up to volunteer, I think I, I'm going to say that wrong. Um, but uh, we're, I know that people will be here at about 6 to get some stuff set up for the breakfast. So if you want to help set up or serve, we'll be here about 6 or 6.30. Um, and so the, the, the football boys are there. And, and uh, I know we have it on the thing, but we're still trying to clarify it. We had somehow, our name was on the soup kitchen for the 30th, but we just did it not, not too long ago. So we're trying to figure that out, uh, how that got on there. But uh, so if you'll see the calendar, that's, those are the, some of the major events that are taking place right at the moment. Are there any announcements that I neglected to mention? I just now remembered one. I'm going to be leaving this afternoon uh, for the Northwest Area Clergy Retreat. It'll be down in Romano's State Park. And um, I, I'm either going to come back tomorrow afternoon or Tuesday morning. Uh, I have a city council meeting on Monday that I'm, I really kind of need to be at. But I'm waiting for them to tell me, yeah, it's OK. You go ahead and go. So uh, anyway, I, I won't be in the office uh, tomorrow or Tuesday, but if you'd like to call and leave a message, please feel free to do so. And Shiloh, make sure I get the messages, I promise. So if there are no other announcements, let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship.
in this place, we in the Christian Church, Disciples of Christ, uh, believe in baptism by immersion, but acknowledge and recognize baptisms from all faiths and traditions. But baptism is a huge part of who we are. We believe that those moments inside the water re re remind us of Jesus' death and resurrection. And it's in, this, in the like sense that we come to these places and call this holy ground or holy water. Speaking of holy water, Ever since I went to Jerusalem, I tried to pour a little bit of the actual river that Jesus was baptized in into the water to sanctify the same place and time and remembrance of Jesus' baptism. So at this time, let us pray. Creator Spirit, who in the beginning hovered over the waters, and who at Jesus' baptism descended in the form of a dove, who at Pentecost was poured out under the signs of fire and wind, come to us now and open our hearts and minds so that we may hear the life-giving word and be renewed by your power in the unity of the Father and the Son, now and forever. Amen. In the book of Matthew, we read, Jesus came to, from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. From apostolic times, persons have become disciples of Christ by confessing that Jesus is God's Messiah, the Lord and Savior of the world. It's in obedience to Christ's command and in likeness to Christ's example that they have been baptized. Today, we joyously receive new disciples into Christ's one holy apostolic and universal church. It's through baptism that we are brought into union with Christ, with each other, and with the church of every time and place. Through baptism, we are buried with Christ, and that we, like him, may be raised from the dead to walk in newness of life. Through baptism into Christ, God graces us with the gift of of the Holy Spirit to forgive our sins, to cleanse us from all wrongdoings, and to clothe us in with God's own righteousness, and to strengthen us all of our days. Through baptism into Christ, we gain a new identity as sons and daughters of God and receive a, a new life purpose of Christ-like ministry by word and deed. It's in these words that we invite you to remember and rejoice in your own baptisms as we join in receiving this new disciple into Christ and Christ's churches. Okay. Lillian Faye Cunningham comes before us in the sense of asking to uh, receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And I ask you, Lillian, do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and accept him as your personal Lord and Savior? Good. So by the power and the authority of Jesus Christ, I baptize you, Lillian Faye Cunningham, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. We give you thanks, O Holy One, for this, your child, and for the grace acknowledged here today in water and the Holy Spirit. Embrace us as all daughters and sons in the one household of your love, and grant us grace to receive, nurture, and befriend this new person of the body of Christ. We ask all of this in your Son Jesus' name we pray.
pick up your hymnals and join me in hymn number 339, Just As I Am Without One Plea. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. Just as I am, though tossed about with many a conflict, many a doubt, fightings and fears within, without, O Lamb of God, I come. First Christian Church, would you please stand and join me in the call to worship? As we draw near to God, God will draw near to us. Let us approach God with childlike faith. For God loves those who humble themselves. God's arm reaches out to those who are weak. God's help is near to those who are troubled. Let us worship God. Let us pray. Loving God, you offer us such abundance. You watch over us with each day. You provide for us in many ways, sometimes when we don't even need it and sometimes when we do. Father, we thank you for all of the blessings that you give us. Be with us as we take this opportunity to join in worship to glorify you, Father. Help us focus our minds, still our hearts, and recognize you in the music, in the word, and from the table of feast. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Oh, we still need the prayer. <laughs> Please remain standing and join me in opening hymn 581, Near to the Heart of God. <laughs> Jesus 
That worked. That worked well. My team uh, is awesome. I want to invite all of our uh, youth, our children, uh, to uh, that are going to participate in Pray Ground. Now would be the time for you to head in that direction. Uh, so we have a lot of joys and concerns. I, I want to start off with saying um, uh, a major joy for me is, is just... I cannot begin to tell you how much I appreciated uh, the church uh, and the church people uh, trying to help me find success this weekend in just all kinds of ways. Uh, from people helping me put together the chicken salad for using of trailers and coolers and uh, just then the support, just people coming and passing it around. I just, I, uh, it was extremely uh, humbling experience. Uh, and then to have my, my family come and do that with me because they all know how much I love barbecue, it was kind of a big deal. So uh, from the bottom of my heart, I just want to say thank you, uh, thank you, thank you. God, in your mercy. In the midst of yesterday being a celebration, uh, we, I, I, uh, every community that I've ever lived in has had uh, a local rodeo. And uh, I, I was never really involved with rodeo, but I know that I pray every single time that we have one, that we, we don't have any injuries. And as far as I know, uh, last night uh, we didn't have any major injuries from our rodeo. And I just want to praise God for that and that everybody got out and home safely and mostly in one piece. God, in your mercy. And then I want to just celebrate with you all how awesome yesterday was between the parade and the community and everybody having a good time together and uh, just just loving on one another um, it was just, it was just beautiful. Uh, so I wanted to celebrate that with you as well. God in your mercy. Uh, we have, we have a, an extensive list, but it's not exhaustive. Um, we want to ask that you pray for the family of, of Fern Highs, uh, Gabe Becker, Robert Wills Jr. And we ask that you continue to pray, play, pray for the family of Lena Cunningham. All together, God, in your mercy. We have uh, asked, been asked to pray for Nick and Taylor Beckner and family who are having some health issues. Uh, for Paisley Weatherly, who is doing better, and said thank you very much for her prayers. She's a little kid, so it was really neat for her to say that. Um, and then Brittany Cross, who is still in Mercy Hospital. And uh, we lift them up together, God, in your mercy. Uh, we... we uh, we praise God for Debbie Choplin, who is doing much better after her uh, emergency gallbladder surgery, but ask that you continue to keep Paula and her mother in your prayers as she takes care of their, her dad, Jim. And uh, we lift them up together, God, in your mercy. Uh, we got good news from Kyle Klingelsmith's family that he's doing quite well and uh, got good test results. And so uh, we lift him up as... Uh, and, and continue to lift up uh, Betty Dillon and Molly Henley and Hattie Fisher, uh, and, and we lift them up together, God, in your mercy. Uh, Mary Kerfoot still asks us to continue to pray for Johnny Dorsey, her brother, who is in the midst of stage four kidney failure. And uh, we're lifting up Gary Fancher as well as Dale DeBoard and Kathy Miller together, God, in your mercy. I want to continue to lift up those that we know that are battling cancer and lift up Vicki Vaughn, uh, who is, is doing, who's doing well. The, the, the cancer tumor has shrunk almost in half. Uh, so, uh, God in your mercy. And also, we want to lift up Benita Foster, uh, who is uh, doing well, uh, but has decided to stop treatments. Um, and so we lift up Ted and Tammy Bollet as they help Benita in this time. And, uh, and Benita is uh, very comfortable with this decision. And so uh, we lift them up together, God, in your mercy. I have great news in the sense that Jacob Anderson continues to do well. And we lift him up as he's uh, 
continuing to recuperate, and Joyce Stevens. And Rick Schwier, uh, his surgery was extremely successful, and uh, uh, is, he may be yet to come home today or tomorrow, uh, which is way faster than they thought. So uh, we lift them up together, God in your mercy. We know a lot of others that had surgery procedures and uh, tests and things of that nature this week, and I'd just like to lift up all of those in, uh, in our prayers, as well as their families that have been there for caregiving them in those moments. Uh, God, in your mercy. And because I want to make sure I don't leave anyone out, and since I was out of the office on Thursday and Friday, are there any others that we'd like to lift up this morning? Yes, Fred. Let's lift up uh, Fred's daughter, Raquel, and his grandson, Cody, who both have COVID right now, and she's struggling. God, in your mercy. We lift up Dwayne's whole family and uh, Larry Dency together who are battling uh, COVID. God in your mercy. I, uh, that reminds me that we need to be praying for Davy Blocker, uh, who lost his mom this week uh, from complications to COVID. We lift them up together. God, in your mercy. And Verna Scobie asked me to pray for her 50-year-old grandson, Treg Yowell, who is having uh, health issues as well. And Billy Sullins just asked for us to be praying for her to have more strength this morning. We lift them up together. God, in your mercy. Any others? I want us to take a moment and just prepare ourselves for prayer. To take a moment to take a deep breath, to, uh, to close your eyes if you want, or to fold your hands, or however you need to. But let's go to the Lord with open hearts and open minds. Let us pray. Father of lights, creator of existence, God from whom every gift comes that is perfectly, Hear our prayers which we offer fervently to you. And in the name of our glorious Lord Jesus Christ, we pray for the church that we might show forth our faith in action and regard all with impartiality. And be quick to listen and slow to anger. For God, in your mercy... We pray for our nation and all of our leaders and all of those that are in those moments. We ask God that whenever trials and whatever trials may befall us, that you may grant us endurance and wisdom. God, in your mercy. We pray for the world, that the lowly may be raised up and that the mercy may fall on us all. God, in your mercy. We pray for the sick, the injured, the vulnerable, and those undergoing all forms of adversity, that they may all be raised up, especially those that we have mentioned. We ask that you continue to be with Nick and Taylor and Paisley and Brittany and Jim and Debbie and Kyle and Erlene, Jim and Carrie and Ernie. We also lift up to you, O oh God, Larry and Betty and Molly and Hattie and Hannah and Tex, Anita, Dale, Gary and Kathy, as well as Vicki and Benita, Jacob and Joyce and Rick and Mike, Billy and Treg, 
Raquel and Cody, Dwayne's whole family and Larry Desi, Desney. God, in your mercy, we pray for those who are celebrating this week, those that are celebrating at the fair, those that are celebrating with their families, those that had birthdays and anniversaries, and we lift them up to you, O oh God. God, in your mercy, and we pray for those who have died, especially the families of Fern Heise and Gabe Becker, Robert Wills Jr., Walena Cunningham, all the families of the fallen soldiers and refugees. We lift them all up to you that they would draw near to you and that you would draw near to us. God, in your mercy. Gracious God, let our prayers be offered to you with the gentleness that is born from your wisdom, from above that is pure, peaceable, gentle, willing to yield and full of mercy. Amen. My scripture this morning is taken from Proverbs chapter 31, verses 10 through 31. If you'd like to follow along as I read aloud, it is found in your pew Bibles on page 585 in the Hebrew section of your Bible. Now hear these words from Lemuel. A capable wife, who, who can find? She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands, she is like the ships of the merchant, and she brings food from far away. She rises while it is still night and provides food for her household and tasks for her certain uh, servant girls. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable, and her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hands to the distaff, and her hands hold the spindle, and she opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. She's not afraid for her household when it snows, for all her household are clothed in crimson. She makes herself coverings. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the city gates, taking his seat among the elders of the land, and she makes linen garments and sells them. She supplies the merchants with sashes. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her happy, her husband too, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a share in the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the city gates. May God bless the reading of God's holy scripture. Amen. Now, in, my, in the 815 service, we talk about this, but we've talked about this for several weeks now, as that in Proverbs, we, we don't necessarily have to know who wrote them. The conversation is the same conversation as it always is, in the sense that these are phrases and conversations that are designed to specifically spur on more conversations, to have that opportunity to discuss how our faith activates in real life. Now, this is probably one of the most famous scriptures uh, that we use all the time. You hear it mostly at funerals of really saintly women, is what they would say. The matriarchs of people's homes. And, and, and while that is, it can be appropriate, it's, it's also important to recognize 
that Lemuel here is talking about his mother. Now, Lemuel, in some circles, would be considered Solomon. Uh, and, and part of what ends up happening is, is the continuation of this is, is that this is supposed to be maternal advice, like a question and answer thing. It starts off with uh, a capable wife. Who can find? And, and he says, you know, not one that remains in the kitchen. The capable wife inspects foods and fields, imports rare foods, hands out the to-do list to her house servants, purchases, that's important for you to notice, and plants a vineyard, puts in 28-hour days, and in her spare time, she sews clothes for her entire family. Her husband may have a job, but this woman manages her own business. This wonder slash superwoman in some aspects could be Mother Teresa, Aaron Brockovich, Martha Stewart before prison time, all rolled into one. And it's in this moment that we go through these female spousal qualities that we get to the real truth of this story. The answer that's at the very end of the whole conversation a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Now remember, we, we talked a little bit about fear last week. Fear is not something to be afraid of. Fear is the, the, the drive that humans have that, is, that guides us in the path of what we walk in, the footsteps of Jesus. It's that, it's that moment where you hear your parent saying to you, well, would you do this if Jesus was standing next to you? It's that painful moment when you hear your parent or a mentor looking at you in the face and saying, man, I'm really just disappointed in you. And that drive that we have to, to work hard for other human beings, that's the fear of the Lord. We have this, have this fear of God in such a way that drives us to do better in, in the humanity, in all of creation, where everyone that draws breath. Now, the woman-slash-wife part is a little deceiving. She may be the model-slash-wife-slash-mother-slash-provider, but as we talked about in Sunday school, consider the patriarchal source from which this comes. Did you catch the part? While she's doing all the work, the husband is sitting with the elders at the gate doing nothing except the real work of justice. The woman is busy providing all of the private needs of the household. Some commentators have been puzzled by the appearance of the phrase, fears the Lord, in the poem. On the capable woman, since it has been totally occupied in praising the woman's mundane activities. The woman's wisdom, which, by the way, is the same one that we read last week, the Hebrew word, hachmot, and fear of the Lord, however, come to express precisely her worldly activities. For Proverbs, there's no difference between the sacred and the secular. All of human life and action is to manifest reverence and obedience to God and show harmony with God's cosmic order. So everything that she does, every breath that she has, she doesn't have time to worry about worldly issues because she is working so hard to take care of her entire household. It makes sense then when we talk about it in the New Testament. When Paul says, why should you guys get married? When they say, well, we want to get married. He's like, well, you shouldn't. Because it's physically impossible for human beings to love one another in the way that God loves us. And if you get married, you should be servants. Doulos is the Greek word. Slaves to one another. Lifting one another up higher than the other so that the other one is never wanting, you see. This is the problem. It's amazing to me how often we put this in our minds of what these women are to the proverb writer Lemuel. 
On just a side note, I, I've always found this passage of Scripture fascinating to me as I was telling my Sunday school class in the 815 version, uh, 18, 15, 815 worship service, that in the, when you read it in Hebrew, each verse is alphabetically in, in line. So it's, it's the Hebrew alphabet beginning to end from, uh, from verse 10 through 31. So each verse starts with the first letter of the alphabet and goes all the way through. Now, why is that important? I don't know. I just think it was cool and I had to point it out to you. When I, when I talk about this passage of Scripture, I'm, I'm reminded of those women in my life and mentors in my life because as we discuss this, this is the, the goal of Proverbs is to spur conversation, right? So if we have those moments, I think about the people that are in my life that worked 27 hours a day and never had time to go out and do the worldly things because they were spending their time serving others all the time. And there are moments for rest because Sabbath is important and you have to take them. Church, you have to take Sabbath. I know that's the pot calling the kettle black, but that means that we're supposed to do those things. I have to tell you, in this moment, you can almost hear the mom talking to Lemuel as this is going on. I could hear my mom in the midst of this conversation. And in case she listens to this, mom, I know that I'm exaggerating a little bit, but it's what was going on in my head at the time. Yesterday, here we are, we are surrounded by uh, all of these people. And I'm, I'm so excited because I've got my brother Adam's family, and I've got half of, well, a, 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 a portion of my brother Luke's family, and I've got my wife and my daughter and my son, and then Chris Thompson and Kian Thompson come and help us serve, and, and it was crazy madhouse. There was at one moment that I'm standing going all over the place, and David Sharp comes over to get the food, and I look at him, and I didn't say anything to him because I just had this blank look on my face because as soon as he comes there, I'm like, and then I walked back into the, in the trailer to grab something and then I realized, oh, I saw David Sharp. And so I walked back outside the door and I looked at him and said, hi, David, I know you were there, I promise. And then my mom calls. It's, you know, a little busy. Hey, are you okay? Yes, mom, I'm, I'm fine. Are you drinking water? Yes, yes, mom. Um, okay, I, just, I was just a little worried. Are, so do you have a lot of people there? Yes, Mom. Are you going to have barbecue left over? Probably. Hey, Mom, I, I got a lot of people here. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, uh, I love you. Bye-bye. Click. So this is about 11, 15, 11, 30. Y'all, if those of you at the fair saw the big line, right? At about noon, all of a sudden, it starts to go really crazy, and, and I start having all kinds of people. And my mom evidently had called and texted me in the midst of all of the crazy. And then all of a sudden, I look down, I see the phone, I pick it up, and I'm like, she says, are you all right? Are you okay? Yes, mom, I'm fine. Everything's good. I promise everything's good. Are you drinking water? <laughs> yes, mom, I'm drinking water. Do you have a lot of people there? Yes, yes, mom. Okay, I just want to make sure I love you. Bye-bye. So the rest of the day goes on, and I'm thinking to myself, oh, I'm in big trouble. It's coming. I'm going to get the words of wisdom from my mom. And then I post the video, thanking people on Facebook, making sure that, you know, because I, I, it was a very emotional moment for me and all this stuff. And so my family and I are literally sitting at Mariachi just kind of trying to breathe. And my mom calls me, son, I just watched your video. Are, are you okay? Did you put on sunblock? Your face looks really red. Yeah, yeah, Mom, I, I, I'm okay, I promise. What are, what are you doing? Well, I'm trying to, trying to chill out, Mom. I, and I'm at dinner with my, you know, with Adam and, and Alyssa and the gang. And, 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 and she's like, oh, okay, what are you eating? Are you eating barbecue at the Mexican restaurant? No, Mom, I don't want to look at pulled pork ever again. <laughs> so, so you're eating Mexican food? Yes, Mom. So did you drink any water? Yes, that's exactly what I have. Oh, okay, well, I just want to make sure you're all right. I love you. Bye-bye. Hmm. 
I, I think a lot of times I think of, about my mom in a, in a way that lifts her up as Wonder Woman. My mom does not sit still. She just, uh, you, you can ask anyone that knows her. She moves and moves and moves and moves and moves. And then at some point she stops to breathe and passes out. And then we ask her, hey, mom, did you drink some water? Are you okay? I think the part that's important for me is, is that she instilled in me this fear of the Lord. She instilled this idea with me that in the same way that Lemuel's mom does to him, that, that in order for us to be servants of God through Jesus Christ, that we are to serve with our whole being. And it's hard. It's not meant to be easy work to be a follower of Christ. It's not everybody's job. It is our job, however, to take care of all of humanity. And yes, sometimes you have to be like my mom and call and check up on somebody that's not necessarily your kid, which all of you do for me as well. I can't tell you how many times it reminded me of you being my extra moms, my extra aunts, my extra grandparents, my aunt, extra uncles, my extra uncles, all of these people coming to check on me and saying, how's it going? Everything going well? Did you drink some water? You see, everything that Proverbs is talking about here is a person that spends their entire existence fearing the Lord, but not for the praise. Not for the praise. You don't do these things to get credit. Credit is heaped upon them. It is sat, sought out. It becomes second nature for people to have this, you can hear the questions in the moment and in the discussion. That there's a sense of the fear of Lord, a fear of disappointing God, not humanity, for not taking the opportunity to feed their families, as it says here, as they inspect the foods. If you read this passage of Scripture, it's all Torah-based. What is the job description of this godly, wonder human being? Well, it's a person that takes care of the food and imports rare foods and, and hands out to-do lists to beat their household folks and takes care of them as if they were a part of their family. It's those that purchase and plant vineyards and that plant seeds in people's lives that'll grow to take care of entire communities. That doesn't look at the time frame and pay attention to the time, but making sure that the job is done. And in their spare time, to sew clothes. For whom? Their entire family. To take care of all of God's creation. For we are all brothers and sisters in the eyes of God. If I knew nothing else about our faith, I would have to take this royal advice from a wonder woman that the only true way to wisdom, no matter the gender, the age, or where a society is on the historical continuum, is, is that we find ourselves in a place not being afraid of the Lord. The challenge then becomes to us, not just because this is a beautiful poem that we can use in our daily life, but it gives us a challenge to do better. To follow in the footsteps of Jesus who paves that path for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we prepare for the call to stewardship, I don't know how many of you all know this, but um, I have volunteered to be 
the um, stewardship committee chairman. And I think I have a, a great committee to work with. Uh, one of the things that we're doing uh, before we uh, even start on a, um, a stewardship plan or campaign is to study what stewardship means, uh, what it means to each of us. Um, and we're going to spend um, several months working on this plan uh, before we, uh, or this study before we uh, come up with, with a plan. And one of the things that, that struck me when we met the other evening is that stewardship is not just about money. It's not just about standing up here every week and saying, you know, uh, we want you to give uh, till it hurts, or we want you to give until you feel joyous, or, or whatever it is. But what it is is it encompasses worship. It encompasses uh, fellowship, evangelism. Everything we do in the church is part of stewardship because stewardship really means what we're doing to help others. Um, so at this time, as we prepare for stewardship, let's think about what it means to each of you. Would the deacons please come forward? Please stand for the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise for blessings for which we give thanks. We have been blessed to live in a country that allows us to worship without fear, a congregation that strives to follow Jesus' teachings, family and friends that love us unconditionally. You have blessed us all with the talents to serve all your creation. God, give us the strength and wisdom to follow your instructions as Peter shared in 1 Peter 4, 8 through 10. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins offer hospitality to one another without grumbling each one of us should use whatever gifts he has received to serve others faithfully and administering god's grace in various forms we humbly pray this in jesus name amen you may be seated In the Christian Church, Disciples of Christ, we come to this place as a, uh, uh, as a place of remembrance. It's a place that we remember our baptisms. It's a place that we talk about uh, what this means to us. But it, the goal is, is that it's a remembrance of that Last Supper. It's a 
it's a place that transports us through space and time. And we find ourselves around that table with Jesus and his disciples, knowing full well that we were going to fail in that mission. Knowing full well that Jesus, well, was going to have moments of disappointment in us. That Jesus would give us the challenge to go, therefore, and preach and teach us and baptize them in his name. And we would still stumble. Our hope in the Christian church, Disciples of Christ, is, is that this becomes a place of repentance, but also a place of challenge. To recognize that even in the aspects of us and our limitations, that God finds something beautiful in us. For all of those that profess that Jesus is Lord. It doesn't have to be a proverbial statement. It's a moment for us to remember and that place to connect all the way back to Christ. So when we come to this moment, we can remember those moms, those dads, those mentors in our life that led us to this place in the same way that Christ led them to us. So let us prepare and fear the Lord as we sing our communion hymn. Please join me in hymn number 548, The Old Rugged Cross, verses 1, 3, and 4. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the was on that old cross Jesus suffered and died to pardon and sanctify me so I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the That night in that upper room, that Jesus took a loaf of bread and blessed it and broke it, saying that this is my body which has been broken for you. Take this and eat it in remembrance of me. And likewise, he took a pitcher of wine that he shared amongst those same friends and disciples, saying that this is my blood which has been poured out for you. As often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you do so in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Father. We humbly accept your invitation to this, your table. 
where we lay down our sins and otherworldly things that keep us apart from you. As we partake of these sacraments emblematic of your broken body and shed blood on the cross, let us be mindful of your great sacrifice so that our trespasses may be washed away. We are sinners, fragile in temptation, and often weak in our faith. We pray that you will not let go of us, but you will hold us in your loving arms. Help us to go out and share the good news of your divine grace and mercy with all those we meet. Now let us pray the prayer you taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now receive the bread of life given to us freely. and may we drink from the cup of salvation. Praise be to God for the gifts of God, for the people of God. Amen. So we come to that time of our worship service where we rededicate ourselves as followers of Jesus Christ, challenged, equipped, and ready to go out into the world, following in his footsteps, knowing that we're going to stumble. And that with each other, we get to have the opportunity as a community to pick each other up, dust each other off, and move on to the next place and journey that God has presented to us. Would you please stand as we rededicate ourselves at this time of our worship. For the closing hymn, number 433, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds, I've added a verse in between the first and second verse. So if you're following in the hymnal, you'll need to look at the screen for that verse. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love, the fellowship of kindred minds is like to that above before. I'd like to invite Lily to come forward real quick, if, if you're back there, Lillian. <laughs> so, you know, it's a little weird because now this means you're a big person, right? Right? So we want to we present to you, this is a certificate of baptism, which we could put in a frame and stuff, right? And you put that on your wall. And then this is this what we give out. It says, there is, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, there is a baptism, a new creation. Old things have passed away, and look, new, and look, new things have come. So that's where we get our ideas of baptism. So we wanted to present this to you. Now, here's the fun part. You get to come out there with me so that everybody can welcome and congratulate you today. So, maybe I'll take that. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is Lillian Faye Cunningham. She's been baptized today, and I, I forgot to mention the most important part. 
<clears throat> I realized as I left the baptistry, I forgot that you have a job in the midst of that baptism sermon. So, congregation, now that Lillian has professed her faith and has been baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, it is entrusted upon you to take the opportunities to be in her life as mentors, wonder people, if you will, to raise her up in this faith. And you as congregation, do you take this job uh, with your soul, heart, and being? We do. we do. Awesome. Let us now receive this benediction. Almighty God, we ask that you be with us as we leave this place transported into a world that needs your love and mercy. Be with us, O oh God, until we meet again. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.